Okay, so this time we'll be adding constraints to our skeleton, um, and these will help us later on uh, when we get to animating our thylacine. So um, constraints are really useful because they allow us to uh, move more bones than we actually do uh, manually, or it constraints calculate. Uh, certain things among bones so we only have to move some of them instead of the whole thing instead of the complete skeleton we only move certain controller bones and so for the legs we'll use ik constraints inverse um, kinematics and so we we'll just add these now so uh, they need controllers. So we uh, select the foot bones and duplicate them. And we're already at it. We can simply uh, work on only one side. So we turn off the x-axis mirror and delete one side only. This will save us some work. On. Okay, so now we have our our duplicated bone here, and we rename it ikhand.l, and we unlink it from its parent. It shall not have any parent, so we use this blank space, and same procedure. For ikfoot.l and unlink it. So now we've got these bones here and we want to be able to select them nicely so we simply move them to the second layer here and now they're not visible in this layer anymore. And same for this one. We also bring it to the second layer so now we can swap the layers and we see only our two controllers on this layer and this one is only the skeleton itself so now if we move those controllers um, it has no effect at all so now we want to make um, this leg dependent on the controller and so we add this constraint the IK constraint and so here we type in the object so this is armature and of course this takes a while if we have to type this often so we can simply rename this to A here too and now we can simply type A and this is uh, this is shorter IKF no this is the hand so we use IKH.L now you see we got this dependency line and this is the length of the chain influence so now this has some influence here so those bones in the chain stretch to fit to the controller uh, there's a few things we can improve here so we use tail then you see it uh, swaps in the right place uh, but now we've got to change the chain length make it one shorter and now it looks pretty good and then there's one more thing because now if we go back here or upward here forward uh, you see that the paw doesn't uh, follow our controller so we add another constraint this time a copy rotation and go down here type in a and ikf.l and now when we take our controller um, the the um, the paw follows its rotation and it keeps keeps it wherever we go so this is quite useful for leg Okay, exactly the same procedure 
here at the back we take the foot bone add an IK solver put in the target IKF.L uh, disable use tail and set the chain length and add a copy rotation constraint type in A IKF.L and we're good. Okay, so now we can do some more stuff, and that is we can limit rotations against certain um, joints. So if we have this here so um, around the knee the knee can only rotate in one direction in our case it is uh, rotate about the x-axis so what we can do here is um, we can lock y and lock z so now if we rotate this one here out it will only rotate about the x-axis and so we can also do the same thing here also lock y and lock z and now you see all the um, all the sideward movement comes from the the uh, thigh joint so uh, this is exactly how it would look like in a real animal and this is what we want and the same thing here uh, we don't have any um, any rotation about the uh, z-axis here and what oh no uh, not limit but lock uh, now also again uh, I'm I'm keeping the shoulder joint flexible because the um, it is quite flexible actually so we don't have to lock it there okay so now we can get back to rest pose and we can mirror these on oh, no, one more thing so we've got our lung controller here and we can also add a limit rotation constraint and here and for example we can go on local space instead of world space so now it um it checks the uh, rotations relative to the bone so we can um it only uh it's only supposed to rotate about the z axis so we can limit y and limit x now you see you can only rotate it about the z axis so this makes it a little bit easier to animate later on because you don't have to worry uh, that it would go into unwanted directions and we can also limit Z we can for example by minus 10 degrees and uh, plus 10 so it doesn't get too strong now we've got those min and max ranges and it can only go in between and also if we turn on for transform you see now I can uh, in transform properties here it changes but if I uh, turn on for transform uh, it only works until the borders like we said only minus 10 and plus 10 so now we're done we can go back to mirroring it so we select these all and duplicate them W flip left right names 
and turn on x axis mirror, grab them and the board. And now we have, oh yeah, now we can turn on this mirror again too. And now we can pose the whole thing and it should move properly. The way it's supposed to be. Okay. So now we maybe want to add some more constraints. For example, to the spine, um, we can use an IK solver again, but this time without any target. So we'll only specify the train length. So it goes until the uh, pelvis. Or we can include the pelvis and this one allows us to perform uh, some bending actions but we can still um, modify the individual bones of a chain if we take this one and rotate it in an IK chain with a target um, we get unexpected results so, but here we can simply rotate it and, it and it behaves just like a normal bone. And we can do the same here also, IK solver, no target, and perhaps for the whole spine. So we can perform things like such uh, bending down actions quite easily. And the same thing on the tail, really quick. Oh yeah. So we can also do some curling stuff. Okay. So we're more or less done with uh, with um, the constraints set up. Just one more thing that I want to do now, and that is uh, sizing it correctly. So we go to edit mode, and you see this um, those uh, stronger grid units uh, represent one meter. So uh, thylacines are or were um, about 60 centimeters long, uh, tall at the shoulder. So we can simply scale it down here until 60 and now it's accurately sized. It's also supposed to be about between 1 meter and 130 long and we're about 120 so this is quite accurate. Okay and of course we have to scale, uh, scale skeleton as well so just make it fit and move it down a little because I also moved down the model itself and now we can also bring it on or bring it up no We'll just keep it somewhere here, the BIP01 node. Okay, um, so now we got to make sure that our scale is uh, always 1 because if we don't, uh, this could cause problems later on. Okay, both for the skeleton and for the cube for our model. Okay. Okay, so the next thing uh, that we want to do is to unwrap our model onto a UV map uh, so we can later on create the texture. And we can already do this at uh, this early stage. Okay, so we go into edit mode and get our UV window here at the side. And first thing we need is a new image and we turn on UV test grid and unwrap 
and now we can select our test grid and unwrap again and you see it it's trying to bring it down onto a flat surface it works good at some areas it doesn't work so well at others and it doesn't work at all on the legs um, and this is because there is it tries to bring it down onto the flat surface but it doesn't work because the legs are extruded and there is no way to bring it without uh, cutting it open so this is like like uh, well if you would peel an orange or something you have to cut it uh, to bring it onto a flat surface so we will move along the inside of the legs to uh, create a scene and this will then allow uh, the unwrapper to uh, to bring it into a flat um, into a, yeah into one layer okay so we go from the middle line up here to the pore and then we press control e mark scene and then we do the same here for the for the paw so we go around the front here and there we can stop I think so we'll just mark the seam once again and then we can test it unwrap and you see it already unwraps much better so this looks pretty good of course we've got to do the same procedure um, for the back leg okay so again from the middle um, we might better take this edge row because we have uh, we might get quite a bit of distortion here around the edge um, so we'll take this one <coughs> and mark the seam around the paw as well and unwrap it one more here and this seems to work mm, so now we can think about how the UV <coughs> map should be arranged um, for example it's usually a good idea to cut off the head because the head is often uh, given a lot of detail so we'll cut here around the year and here around the, the base of the ear and we'll cut here um, to end and the head. So now we end that again. We've got this one solo here. So okay, this is not the best way to have it with that much distortion here. So we'll just go one edge further, and now it looks better. Or even better if we perhaps it would be better to have the ear on the other side. Um, but I think it doesn't really make a huge difference in this case. Delete this seam and we can try. So we go and mark these and now free it here. So clear those seams. And of, okay, this is better because we've got um, 
more space here between those seams. Back there we had very little space. And now this allows us to um, have better uh, or have less noticeable seams. Okay, so now we also have to do the inner mouth. Um, so we can open the drawer. Medium point. <coughs> um, so we've already talked about it. Um, so we'll just extrude it now. And remove doubles. And we can turn on the off the mirror so we see it better. And now we move these in somewhat. And oops. Uh redraw it. Come on. Okay. Um so So now we've got the inside fixed here. If we unwrap again, we got it attached. Okay, so now we can also go to texture view uh, to check how much um, our distort, how strong the distortions are. So now if we make it um, like three times the size, you can see clearly where we get um, distortions. So of course this is a critical area here. Um, the draw that was to be expected so it would distort quite a bit. Um, so what we can do is to to change the rest pose. Uh, so we just clear rotation and location and scale just to be sure. And now we can open it um, to, let's say, um, 60 degrees minus 60. And maybe this one by 15. And now we can um, apply the armature modifier. Oops, we got to bring it up to the front first. So apply. And now this one has no more influence on the model. It's static um, and we want to apply this pose as our rest pose. So control A and apply. And now this one is the default pose. And now we can parent the model back to our armature. And we can don't we can skip creating groups. So now this is our rest pose. And now if we unwrap it now you can see we've got this stretch here included. So now we've got a compromise for when we when we um, have the mouth closed or when we have it completely open, we have less stretching at all at all positions that are plausible to happen. So now um, oh yeah, we can triangulate this one because it looks ugly. And also this one.
and now you can see what else could we split off so now we want to make it fit our UV map as good as possible so we could get rid of the tail on this one and so now it fits already quite a bit better if we increase the size of the head we get quite a good amount of fill on that UV map already of course it could be better so mm, we can exclude some more things here we have to exclude the eye um, because it we need it for blinking so mark the seam okay so okay so now we'll start uh, creating the actual map and first of all you can see here the the neck is is um, of less resolution than uh, the rest of the body um, so we'll just start with unwrapping the neck portion this is because we have some angle going here some strong angles and those are affecting it not so nicely so we'll just unwrap it now and pin it and now unwrap the rest of the body against it of course now it is freakingly huge now if you check this it is more uniform because the the neck is UV'd as it should be and not how the body tells it it could go so now we've also got uh, less possible uh, distortion here so we can go 2D cursor makes it a little bit easier and now we can go ahead and pin more of it okay one more thing first um, we can use the control A here to um, make all islands all UV islands of the same um, relative size so they have all the same detail so we can just go here and then they're all about the same size in uh, relation to the model okay so now we can pin them all move them out because those annoy us now okay so now you see it fits here and here and here but this part of the leg sticks out a bit mm, so we'll take it and we turn off uh, we turn on our fall off tool once again and you can see we can make it fit here and interpolate nicely with the rest of the body or we could also run the unwrapper again and unpin some of those areas here if it brings a better result we can use it so now we will unpin those and see if the unwrapper looks better in fact it doesn't so we'll keep the old one we'll keep the pinned one as our final UV okay so this is good this is good this is good okay so we can bring this one up here turn off the fall off again so 
So try to um, try to keep as far away as possible from anything um, else on the UV map. Because um, if you zoom out later on, you create um, you create those seams that are caused by MIP maps, and uh, the more the more space there's between between them, the the better, or the the less of those seams you get. Okay, so we'll keep some free space here and because we can use it later on um, for example we will probably add in um, some pouch texture most likely and also uh, whiskers and teeth we haven't added them in yet um, because I don't really know how they look like exactly at the moment. So once this is researched properly, we can we can add them as well. Okay. Um. So now this is more or less our UV map for now, and if we if we wanted to, we could export it as it is. So um, we go to UVs, scripts, save UV face layout, and with these options, then we can save it somewhere desktop, and then it's here. Okay, so um, that's it about UVing, and the uh, next step will probably be um, starting to animate it.